YouTube, what is going on? My name is Kevin, AKA The Tech Ninja. And today I am reviewing a smartphone called the Oppo Find 5. And a lot of people are arguing it's the best Android phone out right now. Is this the case? You may be asking yourself, what the heck is an Oppo Find 5? How do I even pronounce Oppo, Oppo? Was there even an Oppo find one through four? Well, let's begin with this. Oppo has been around since 2004, making Blu-ray players, MP3 players, and LCD screens. They have never been a household name for phones. Now, will they ever become one? Only time will tell, but I will go on record and say this. This is the best Android phone you have never seen nor heard of. The first impressions of this device is always the same. Wow, look at the screen. This phone looks awesome. But before we get into all that, let's go ahead and cover some of the specs. The Oppo Find 5 is sporting a true 1080p 5 inch screen with 441 DPI. That is one of the best screens we have ever seen in the mobile device market. 2 gigabytes of RAM, Qualcomm A4, which is the same chip you'll find in the Nexus 7 2013 edition, and the Nexus 4. This device also comes factory unlocked. That's right, it's hacker friendly. The device feels sturdy and solid, feels and looks like a premium device. I have not seen a drop test for this device, but I do wonder how strong this plastic really is. The USB port is located on the bottom and slightly towards the edge. The volume rocker is on the right hand side. I feel that the volume buttons are a bit difficult to get to sometimes. Not sure if it's an adjustment period is needed, but it's something worth mentioning. The power button is on the left hand side, which feels unnatural to me since my hands already grasped the right hand side. It did bother me enough to find a hack to use the volume keys to turn the screen on though. On the front of the device, you will see a multicolor LED indicator there is a white or whatever color you purchase chin that dips down a bit which adds a bit of style and separation from the screen. The edges of the device are sharp and somewhat feels boxy in your hands. The bezels are extremely thin, 3.25 millimeters to be exact, and it appears that the screen gracefully fades into the device instead of a harsh stopping point. The sound that this device produces is fantastic. It's really on par with the HTC One and the Nexus 7. Sound is loud and clear, and it has great lows and mids. I was able to use the speaker to play music from about 20 feet away, and I still heard every nuance of the song. All in all, the hardware is top notch. The software that it came with is called Color ROM, and to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it. It is based off the MIUI ROM, or MUI, which really wants to look like Apple iOS. Some applications I was attempting to download were not compatible with this ROM, there has been a few updates to fix these issues, but I really didn't care long enough to even give this thing a chance. There were a lot of cool things about it. You can easily change the theme, download user-generated themes right from the setting menu. This includes icons and lock screens. The icons are large and have a familiar gloss to them. The home screen scrolls between pages quickly with the occasional lag, but overall, it was a solid temp into building a ROM. Also, the camera application was very robust with many different shooting modes and features. Lightning quick with great details. Shooting HDR video at 1080p was a really cool experience, but I won't keep a ROM that I don't like just for the camera, no matter how good it is. The device comes unlocked, so flashing a ROM is simple to do. Even a novice could do it. I made a guide on how to do so, so clicking the link on the description will actually walk you through it. Once I installed the ROM of my choosing, I was a happy man. The device handles every task with ease, without much slowdown. The games run smooth as well. I played emulators, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Nova, all with minimum slowdown. Opening apps, gaming, multitasking, all can be done on this device with no issues at all. Real world performance. So what's good about having nice specs and a sleek body if it doesn't perform in the real world? Well, this device works as you expect in the year 2013. The device is very clear with calls, the speakerphone is plenty loud due to the upgraded sound system, and the earpiece is passable. I have not once had a person tell me they couldn't hear me or to repeat myself. I did wish the battery life was better, however. It's on par with my Nexus 4 as a decent battery, and I can get about 10 to 12 hours on a single charge with, with decent use on Wi-Fi. 
I feel at this time, all phones should be able to get two days. Two days? The ringtones sound clean, loud, and clear, which is good that I can actually hear it when it's in my pocket when I'm in a room full of a lot of people. Intangibles. This phone has a few intangibles I would like to touch on. Since this phone is unlocked, it was easy to put a custom ROM on the device, which basically is software created by third parties to allow modification. A lot of times these custom ROMs work better than the stock software. Apple does not mind that you do that. They even have ROM makers' names on their websites and how to access the files. You would never see a big company like HTC do anything like that. Most companies go out of their way in blocking you from doing this. Since Apple was not a household name, many people want to see my phone and use it. For me, I like it. I enjoy sharing my story of how I got the phone for one, and also the power of Android when I show off some cool apps I have. Each person who has used it has enjoyed the phone, and each person liked how it felt, and they loved the screen. Conclusion. Is the Apple 5 worth a $500 price tag? With the color ROM installed and you're not looking to change ROMs, I will say no. Now, if you're looking to install a custom ROM, then it's tough to say. The Nexus 4 screen may not be as nice, but for $350 for almost the same specs, it's really hard to see the advantage. I do like the phone a whole lot. Just for me, it's hard to justify the price. The Nexus did spoil us by allowing us to buy an unlocked phone for such a cheap price. But the Nexus aside, and if money is not an issue, is it worth it? Yes. The phone is great, the looks, the speed, the functionality, and openness. It really makes this phone a true winner. With all that being said, I give this phone an 8.5 out of 10.